Hello and welcome to Trainsim TV. In today's video, we're going to be having a look at the MPV, the multi-purpose vehicle created by Gold Star Trains and published by Alan Thompson Simulation.com. Uh, it's been a product that's been um, in the works and pipeline for a good number of months now, probably throughout the duration of this year, and I think potentially a little bit of um, the back end of last year as well. Um, there's been a lot of um, previews and images and videos on the on the run up to this um, throughout the year, uh, and I'm quite excited to actually get hold of it and have a go. To be fair, it's uh, it's a cool bit of kit, and again, it's a massive massive gap filler in the uh, the train simulation AI scene and driving scene. I mean, yeah, I, I'm actually quite chuffed to finally have one of these in the game. Um, I always remember the days of MSTS when this was in uh, on that route. Um, so to finally have one of these in TS is absolutely fantastic. And again, more trap plant um, machinery, which is always nice to see. So this is Gold Star Trains' second, not first, sorry, second release. Um, the first pack they worked on was the Tampa, uh, Tampa pack. So we've, we've done that a couple of times on the video and we've also streamed it as well. So you'll have seen that and you'll be familiar with what that is. This is um, a more modern uh, unit, if you call it modern. It was built, I think, between 1997 and 1998, I think. Um, I've got some gen and specs and stuff to go through, so we'll cover all that as well. Um, but it's looking very cool. It's looking very cool indeed. Um very highly weathered in here um so yeah we're gonna have a look at this take it for a drive um this is one of the included scenarios i don't know if we're gonna do the whole thing we're just gonna have a little play with it just show you what's what and i'm just gonna have a look around it in general and give you uh, a few bits and pieces of what my thoughts are um i have driven the tutorial i'm not gonna do the tutorial on here because truth be told i like the idea it's just very very boring <laughs> um it seemed to just go on forever. I know it's talking it's talking through a lot of things, but to be quite fair, you could find a lot of it out in the manual. I just think it's a, it's a good idea. I think it just needs a bit more thought going into the script work on it, um, I think. That's my two penny on it. But do go and play the tutorial because, again, if um, you're not into reading manuals, it will help you out. It'll talk you through it. But I'm fairly confident now I can get this moving um, without having to do another tutorial. So... That is that. Um, right, so let's get this thing unpaused and we'll get our train set up. It's pretty simple and we're in the actual motor end so we don't have to faff around and go to the other end and uh, activate the slave or anything like that. So let's unpause it. So first of all, we're going to put the key in, which is under there, just give that a uh, twist. Then we're going to put the instrument lights on. A little uh, nozzle there which you can uh, brighten them up. So whack it to neutral. Um, my thoughts on the reverser is a little bit on the slow side, uh, changing. It'd be nice if that could be speeded up a little bit, but it is what it is. It just takes a little bit of time uh, flipping between on the keyboard. I'm using keyboard. I'm not sure if it works with the PVC or anything yet, so I'm not going to bother with that. I'll investigate that further in the streams. Um, headlights are already set up. I did that before the video, but that's obviously on H. Usual stuff. Next up we're going to do is the GSMR. Now, my thoughts on the GSMR is it's a lovely it's a lovely model. Don't get me wrong, the issue is it doesn't make any noise when you click the buttons. It's all quiet. But uh, we'll put our information in. So it's free. Sierra 09. Signal is 581. So yeah, it, it doesn't make the clicking noise. Just gonna tip that. It'll, uh, it'll start registering. It makes. Oh, let's make that. It makes noise at the end of the uh, sequence, though. So I don't know why it doesn't do the clicking noises when you press the buttons. Um. Yeah. So I'm, uh, it's a bit hit and miss with that. I, I like the model and all that. But I'm. Bit of a shame that it doesn't actually uh, make the clicking noises as we are used to with the AP uh, GSMR. Uh, right, moving along. So everything's actually set up uh, pretty much. Now, we're just waiting for the actual signal to change. So we'll just have a look around the cab. Um, windows open. Sounds do actually change when you open that, which is cool. 
No sliding window noises though, which is a bit of a shame. And bear in mind, this is a £22 product if you don't have a subscription. So for that sort of price, you're, expect, you're obviously going to be expecting quite high stuff on this. High, high um, expectations. So you'd be expecting certain sounds to be there on this sort of stuff, I, I, personally. Same with the, the, the blind as well. No sound off that. Now the sounds that come with the train are absolutely superb. <laughs> Won't get me wrong, I'm not going to knock these because I, I think there's some really lovely sounds put in here. Um... The sounds come from Lego Man Biffo, and they were mixed, I think, by Max Mortimer. I think he's done the actual work putting them into the train itself. Um, the manual does actually say... Uh, we can go, by the way. I'm just going to pause a second. We'll go through this um, credit bit you just mentioned on here. So, yeah. Sound Engineering was Max Mortimer, Lego Man Biffo, sound uh, source recordings on that. Um, other bits and pieces just to go through. So, scenarios were done by Matt Carroll, Richard Fletcher, and Hayden Yates. Uh, you've got some special thanks to the the network rail mpv operator and an engineer on there as well you've got ben swift for additional scripting and engineering uh code cell for aws sounds and radio kit specialist aws sounds are actually quite good i do like them they sound good quality uh, you've got james I uh, james ival and lewis Clouds for textures and then the publishing goes to alan thompson and pete mitchell so that's that bit i'm sort of going back, uh, back to front here on the manual so i'm just going to put that back to the top Right, now then, we can go. So, to get this thing moving, you have to press R. And if you just look on there, you see the little things lifting up. So, we can now apply the power. It says. But, what I haven't done is take the DRA off. And remove the parking brake. Because I'm absolutely pro at this sort of stuff. <laughs> Try again. There we go. Now, that is 100% throttle. Now, I've watched some videos on YouTube of how these things depart, and I've got to say that this is very slow. They don't depart this slow on videos, so 100% it is taking a long time to get moving. I don't personally think that this is actually 100% accurate in, in departure. Revs are still going. But I just feel like it's a bit too slow. If you actually watch videos on YouTube, they, they seem to take off a bit quicker than this. But that is that, so I'd like to hope that that may get looked at. Yeah, sounds cracking. Personally, actually, one of the nicest horns I've heard in TS. Yeah, that sounds decent. I'm loving the cable and going over the top. It's a cracking bit of kit, though, isn't it? Lots to part. Uh, Duncan's modelling, I've got to say, Duncan's model has come on leaps and bounds and the texturing as well uh, from the Tampa. A heck of a lot better. He's, he's definitely improved, obviously, as he's learnt along the way. There is a few issues. I will get to them. But um, them things can be definitely sorted. I don't think there are issues that would probably sit there for long. I think once, once they're made known and about, I think we would see them sorted. I know, and I remember when the Tampa came out that um, Duncan did fix things pretty quickly. So we do have a red coming up shortly. I have driven a little bit this now just before, just to make sure I knew what I was doing before I got this thing moving. Um, I don't know if this scenario is going to talk us through getting us actually moving with the, uh, the jetting, but if not, I will go through it and just turn it on and show you. It's got some really nice effects as well on the spray. But we'll, do, we'll get this thing to uh, the signal. I like that button uh, when you punch that um, mushroom down. I like that. That clicking sounds really nice. Uh, what we got? There's all sorts of buttons. I've no idea what they do though. They just come up with a blank box. Uh, TCA fault test. No idea what that does. 
don't think everything uh, will operate. There's a lot of functions and stuff mentioned. I love the beep beep. I'm presuming there's probably a hotkey for that. I don't actually know. Oh, it's C. <laughs> I love that. It's brilliant. Little car horn. I like Roadrunner off Looney Tunes. <laughs> brilliant. Yeah, let's get this thing to the stop at the uh, signal. Good AWS uh, horn there. I like that. It's good quality. All the sounds up to now have been really good quality. Cannot knock the sounds at all. Really well done. Let's get this thing stopped here. A little bit of wheel slip there. It is autumn though. Right, uh, there we are. Into neutral. So whilst we're waiting, I'm going to have a quick look around. I'm just going to put a few things out that I've clocked. Uh, I do this with everything I look at. Um, so please do not take offence uh, if you are watching Duncan uh, or anyone else that's been involved. It's just one of the things I like to look for. So I look around the model first of all, just making sure anything isn't disappearing. I would do this exactly the same with a uh, asset, a building, um, a station or anything like that to make sure nothing's disappearing at certain angles. So this is exactly the same sort of process I would go through uh, with a piece of rolling stock. So I've only had a little skim around and have found a few things. So things that I've noticed that disappear are the couplers. It's not going to do it now, is it? Hang on. There we go. So at certain angles, you can notice that the coupling hook there is um, disappearing on different views. Um, same again with some of the, uh, the modules on the back of the um, train itself. I've, I have noticed that they are doing it again. So these are some issues that um, have sort of followed through from the tamper pack. So um, stuff like this, in my eyes, should be uh, caught in testing when you're looking skimming around. But obviously, it's slipped through the net at the end of the day. Fingers crossed, um, these can be rectified and uh, sorted in a patch down the line. Um, we'll go on to the actual general look of everything in a moment. We're going to have a good look round. Well, yeah, same again down here. Um, I've, I've noticed that there was couplings and bits and pieces that, that do it up here look as well. So there's up there. Um, it's not a great deal of things that are disappearing. It's just bits and pieces. So again, hopefully these will be uh, looked at and addressed. Um, there was something else to note as well. Now, this is the same sort of thing that I found off the 87 pack. Is When you're on the external view, this hole in the cab roof. Um, there's a few texture issues going on as well. I know this is obviously um, not the higher res detail cab as such, but when you're having a look through there, you can see holes again there. You wouldn't want to be seeing holes in your train. Same again on the opposite side there too. Uh, and again in the roof there. So... Stuff like that, I'd, I'd like to hope do get fixed. I'm loving the uh, the actual detail and the texture. Very nice. I noticed as well um, in the in terms of the texture, there's a, a bit of a shadow blotch going on in the top of the roof here as well. Uh, fingers crossed that can be sorted, and I think. Hopefully I'm not talking absolute bull, but I don't think them screws have been textured. They look untextured to me. Um, both of those. Fingers crossed these, uh, these could be addressed. If I'm not talking absolute rubbish. But yeah, it's looking good. Just little bits, really. It's nothing massive. Just odd little bits that have obviously slipped through the net. I'm loving all the uh, the cable detail and stuff that's going on. I can't really see it very well because it's not in the sunlight there. I'm overly sold on the um, the buffer texture. I think that's. I just don't think it really suits with the actual train itself. It looks a bit too in your face. Just doesn't look natural for the game. It's looking cool down here. Cables that aren't quite connecting up there. Looking good though. 
So these obviously are RHTT um, units. So obviously RHTTs, you'd picture them as being the blue tanks, like the FEA um, tanks um, that will, will top and tail with locos. So these are the alternatives to uh, said workings. Now these also act as a uh, weakling train as well. So I'm presuming, I haven't gone through the full manual yet, but um, weakling potential, I think, may be sort of a thing you can do as well. I'm presuming you just run the jetters and it'll just, you can just pretend you're simulating this. Um, yeah, it's looking really cool. I did notice as well before when I had a look around prior to this that the uh, the Network Rail logo has got some weird um, lines going underneath the actual logo. It's like it's been like where, the, where it's been cut out, sort of like something's been left over. Other than that, yeah, it's cool. I'm liking it. Same with the numbers, some white marks above the numbers. Um, I mean, this one, this for me is probably a little bit too anal, but um, the dark, like dark blue, is not going on the uh, on where it's insets and on the side part there. If you see what I mean, it's uh, all light blue down that side bit. Whether that's intentional, I don't know, but to me, I would have thought it would have been dark blue on so far. Um, and again, over there, you can just see some bits aren't lining up quite as they should be. See it more. Actually, it looks it actually looks so bad on this side. It seems to be a bit more out of line on that side. Again, whether that's intentional, I'm not overly sure. Could be. But yeah, it's a pretty neat looking bit of kit, isn't it? Look at all that in there. It's all been 3D modelled. It has as well. It's not even just a texture. It's actually been 3D modelled into that. Some of it's a bit flat. Not got all all of it 3D, but the actual buttons are all 3D. It's really cool. Look at all this down here. Wow. A lot of work's been put into this. I, I have followed the progress that this has been built, so I, I've seen what's been, been done with this. I have been watching it quite closely. That's very impressive. And it runs quite well, to be fair. I'd say how much detail has been put in this. It, it runs really, really well um, in terms of FPS. Train there as well. Pretty decent. It's got some good looks for a tamping unit. It's a very interesting little bit of kit. It'd be great to now see these running alongside it, like in a scenario, or sat in a yard where they are, like Wigan Springs branch. Um, so these would be pretty well seen around there. I'm missing Link for a start, and many other routes down south and stuff as well. <clears throat> I noticed one thing with the sound is when you actually put the PVC into drive, it, if you just knock it through, it clicks more than it should. I feel like it should like do once and then click a bit more when you go through. Like that. That to me sounds a little bit off. Right, so we've got... Aha! We haven't taken DRA off. There we go. Hang on. Into forward. There we go. We'll get ourselves moving. Give it a minute. It does take a bit of time. <clears throat> Quite a, quite a lengthy manual comes with this. So, first of all, liveries. You get rail track, network rail original, network rail refurbished, network rail refurbished and dirty, network south, uh, sorry, network rail and southwest trains original, and then network rail and southwest trains refurbished. So those are the variants in liveries. Uh, the manual obviously gives you all the pictures for this. It shows you what they all are. It's got the pink one in there as well. It's got named named ones as well. So you've got um, Dick Preston, you've got Jen, uh, John Denyer, and Clive Lemon, Nigel Cummins, as well. So there's name ones in there. You can hear the gear changes. Really cool. I usually turn the DSD off, but. Because I'm driving with keyboard, I'm going to leave it on because I, can, I don't have to faff about. Max speed of these units are 60 miles per hour, as noted up in the uh, top of the cab there. You've also got the uh, little diagram of what your lights are showing, which is cool. I like that sort of stuff. It's all 3D as well. It's actually all 3D modelled in. It's really clever. I like that. It's smart. I like the fact you've got these uh, side blinds as well. The technical information for these, these were manufactured by Windhoff 
Enter the service between 96 and 97, so I was actually wrong with that. Um, number of these were built. You've got 18 single units and 32 double. Uh, hang on. There we go. Attend to that. Uh, unit length motor control car is 20.190 meters or 66.24 foot. They've got a floor height of uh, 44.5 to 46.5 inches. The maximum speed, again, as I say, well, it actually says on here. It's a bit of a lie, isn't it? It says up there 60, but however, it does actually say 75 miles per hour. With. Oh, hang, hang on a second. So it says 120 kilometers an hour. Which is 75 mile an hour with 112 tons of load. So is it 60 left like when you're not loaded or something? Or is it 60 when you're spraying? I don't quite understand that. I'm not overly sure on that. It's all knows. Do do put that in the in the comments for me just so I, I understand this. But that, that says on there 75 mile an hour is max speed, but yeah, it's 60 up there. Um, they've also got a weight of the uh, of 121 ton. Prime movers, so it's Volvo Rail Pack. It's a diesel engine with six cylinders, and it has a power output of 265 uh, kilowatt, I assume, kW, which is 255 horsepower, basically. Um, it's a six-speed transmission mechanical gearbox with torque converter and retarder. It's braked, and it's got the standard gauge, obviously. As it's running in the UK on the track there. Installation is the usual um, easy installation of uh, running through the installer. You put your details to log in and it'll do its stuff. Um, once installed, you can find the quick drives under the name of MPV as well, it says on there. There is a warning, however, which I don't, I don't know how I sit with this, really. I have actually experienced it as well. Uh, basically, upon the completion, however, I didn't actually complete the story. I just came out of it. Um, if you're driving the MPV, um, so yeah, completing or quitting, the game occasionally dumps, crashes to desktop, um, with not out of memory error. This is due to limitations with the game engine and the MPV due to its extreme complexity, so it says. I'd like to hope that that can be explored and hopefully maybe fixed. Um, what well, it's one of them. I've not even done while I'm driving, which is up, an upside. The tutorial did crash for me the first time round, but I came out and then reloaded back up, um, and it, it did work second time round. So I'm not overly fussed on that. But yeah, fingers crossed that that, that can be looked into, um, maybe as a patch, and if something in the code potentially, maybe that it, it doesn't like. Who knows? Um, but yeah. It's not crashed during driving, which is uh, no no problem. Just a bit annoying that you've got to come back into the game, but such is life. Uh, there's a shed load. I nearly said a naughty word there. There's a shed load of um, controls for you to go through. I'm not going to sit there and tell you every single because there's, there's 49 of them. Uh, it gives you a good description of what everything does as well. So if you like your manuals, go and have a good read. Bear in mind, I'm just doing the basics here. Just basically driving it. I'm just going to show a few things. Um, along the way so everything's got a description of what, what it is and what it does which I like very in depth um, what else have we got here so it talks you through the, the, the screens and stuff as well tells you what all they do uh, you can open your door by the way it be really cool You've got to sort of go behind the uh, the headrest there. The door doesn't make a noise or anything. No way it bangs, which again is a shame. These sort of things on on a quite expensive, pricey unit train or whatever you'd like to class it as a unit. Um, you would expect these sort of sounds to be there. This is we're in sort of AP territory price here, and again we're sort of we're very near to the class one eight five uh, price territory, here, which had noises for the doors when they opened and shut. Along with windows and the, the blind and all that sort of stuff, so I would expect them personally. Um, I did notice as well there was a spelling error um, on the cab lighting button. It says cabine lighting. 
So again, it's just something that fingers crossed can uh, be addressed. Uh, what else have we got? Uh, operator controls. So this talks you through the actual screen on the right hand side. As you can see, that is actually booted up currently, so you can, if you wish, turn all this on. It tells you, well, you click it tells you what water level. I remember watching the stream, it actually goes down when you start um, doing all your stuff. Uh, I have no idea what I've done here now. Start. I've done something, I don't know what I've done. <laughs> How do I go back? Back like. Uh, APU. I see the fuel. I'm pretty certain. That you can go back. I don't know how, how you go back, but. Uh, just pressing buttons. It might do something. I have no idea. <laughs> Enough of that. We'll come back to that in a minute. Oh, watch this signal. So, key bindings. There's key bindings to get all that working. It's not all cases of pressing buttons. You can, if you know what you're doing on the, the buttons, which are told in the tutorial, you'll be able to uh, press things quite quickly. There's all sorts of quick start guides in the uh, tutorial as well. Using scenarios, um, if you want to, now, uh, I think, to get AI moving and doing jets in a scenario, you've got to do some fancy script stuff in your scenarios. It actually tells you what you've got to do, though, which is fair play. It's all done in, it's, I think, a bit of lure. You've got to tick box um, some stuff as well. So, to get the train going, you go to Gold Star Trains, select MPB. Um, MPB also features custom signal messages support using Signal ID 15. This feature of, oh sorry, this feature is aimed at advanced expert scenario creators. Use this feature sets require knowledge of Lua scripting. I have no idea how that works, so I will not be using that. Unfortunately, <laughs> I am no good at all that sort of stuff. But if you are, it, there's stuff in there, and it tells you so you can get the um, jetters on and spraying on and all that stuff. There's loads of stuff, module stuff, changing modules on the back of the train, um, quite in depth. But in the number string, you can change all the numbers, so it tells you how you do all this, and you can have a specific custom setup for how you want the train to look in your scenario, which is cool. But you can have stuff like, I'm looking at a picture here, but if you have, how I can see it at the minute, um, that part would be there. This, that's not there. Uh, but these are, there's a different one actually, there's a different tank that will sit on the front. Looks like there's a different one, so yeah, there's different ways and bits and pieces you can do with this, so that's cool. I haven't had a go making the snow with it yet. I've been looking to see if there's anything I can make. I've spotted something coming coach, which I might make. Or if you don't actually drive with these, you're actually dragging them with 66s. So I don't know how it would work jetting stuff with um, a loco haul in them. I'm not sure how that would work. Have to have a look. Maybe you can do a lower stuff, make it. I don't know. Anyway, uh, scenarios. It comes with a tutorial for Chat Moss, one scenario for Chat Moss, one for DG's Chatham Mainline, London Victoria and Dover Ramsgate route, and one for South Western Mainline, Southampton to Bournemouth. So, three scenarios on three different routes, which is nice. I've seen a bit of hoo ha, to be perfectly honest, about the tutorial being done on Chat Moss. End of the day. It's an ATS route, it's, it's a product sold through ATS, so at the end of the day, they're going to use their own route to do the tutorials. It's like, to be fair, it's like us at JT, if we're going to do a tutorial, we'll probably do it on our own route at the end of the day, so the way it goes. It's not going to bother me. If you've got the route, you've, you've got it. If not, you read the manual and stuff to learn that way, unfortunately. Not going to see no other way around it, to be honest. <laughs> um, I'm not going to boot credits, but we've done that already. Uh, I'm going to go back to the manual on the bit about the 
the screen on the right side just so I can get it all turned on and stuff. Uh, oh, it's got a siren. K and shift. Ooh. Oh, like an air raid siren. <laughs> That's brilliant. Um, I'm just going to press a few buttons here. J is... Oh, I'm gone. Oh, wow. They turn on, they actually flicker. Oh, they turn on. That's cool. So that obviously the light's warming up and turning on. I like that. It's a nice little touch. What else have we got that can find me? Uh... Oh, it does a beacon light, apparently. Oh, it's there. Oh, wow. <laughs> cool. You can see it looping a little bit, but it's uh, still a cool little feature. The light changes around. This will look brilliant at night. I look forward to a nighttime scenario all this sort of stuff. I don't know how and when you'd use that blue light, to be perfectly honest, but it's a cool feature. I'm just going to disable the DSD because it's going to end up capping me out. Um. Windscreen wipers, um, they work, obviously. Slow and fast. They don't have any sounds, though. Again, this is another thing. So these sort of things should have sounds, really, in my eyes. It's very silent on this sort of that sort of stuff. Um, so, yeah, I would like to have seen, or heard, shall I say, a um, sound on that. Um, DSD, yep, we all know that stuff. Hazard lights, you. So there you are, lights flickering left to right. Um, constant speed set, that's done by pressing F. So we're now set at 37 mile an hour. Easy. Um, main throttle and brake lock release that's what it's called to toggle so that little thing we did earlier where you press R that's the toggle so that allows you to uh, take power and use the PVC Control D is isolation of uh, DSD which we've already got uh, auxiliary uh, drive enable is um, X and control so if you're on the slave if you're driving from the end where it hasn't got the engine you'd come to the engine end you'd put the key in and then you would press OX um, drive enable. That allows you then to drive from the other end with um, obviously the engine on this end. But the two toys touch with all that sort of stuff, so it's uh, pretty easy, to be quite honest. Once you've done it a couple of times, it's not actually that bad. Um, the cab dash, um, now there was a f I had a few um, issues on how the actual cab looked originally with the blue and stuff, but it actually looks quite nice. Um, I think it's actually been worked on a bit since. I think a few people probably did mention on Facebook that it just didn't look quite natural. Um, the wood as well looks actually more than it did on the pictures, so I've not really got any issues with that. Uh, I've no idea what this does. It's just got um, minus and plus, so I've no. I don't, I don't think, it's, think it's got a function to be honest. But you can you can press it. Uh, right, we're going to go on to this. So press N to start the APU, press M, start Jetta module, um, press P to start the sprays and all of a sudden before you know it you are spraying. We are now we killing or spraying the rails or something on them lines. I like the spray as well, it's quite cool. Make a nice screenshot, man. We'll go with that. That might do it. I like the effects on the spray. I think they've been reworked from like, the first time they were showed on the stream. They didn't look quite right, I don't think, originally, but they, they look a lot better now. Yeah, some nice effects. Whoever's done that, top 
the uh, top marks on that. Let's see what the sounds like and obviously distance enough. So they are fading off quite nicely actually then. A little bit of Z fighting going on. But to be fair, it's it's a pretty familiar thing to see on the on stock these days. You get it with quite a lot of the AP stuff. I actually think the sound fading is a lot nicer on these than it is on the 185 personally. I still hear it slightly now. That's not a dig at the 185 because I love the 185 as well. <laughs> I have noticed as well, uh, I'm just going to bring this up, there's a weird shadow going on underneath the train. It's like nothing that you usually see. It's normally quite dark under train to test, but you can actually see the track. It's just like an outline of a shadow. Um, it doesn't seem to be a full one, if you know what I mean. It's hard to it's hard to explain it, but yeah, it should be more dark, I think, under there, really. No tracks. So if you purchase this as a non-subscriber, I'm going to get the right price here. If you'll get it right. Go to the store. They'll all be linked in the store for you as well, this. If you wish to go and purchase. It's £21.99. Uh, if you're a subscriber, however, you get um, a discount on that. Or when I log into the website. It's unlocked, it's just locked me out for some strange reason. Uh, just go back to the store page. Come on, the discount you get is £19.79, so that's the price I got it for. The discount, um, it's not a huge discount, uh, it's a couple of pounds. Um, to be fair, I thought there might have been a bit more discount with it being a sub thing. I thought. My understanding was a sub, you sort of got um, quite a chunk of discount, but it is what it is. It's still a couple of quid knocked off, so I'm not, I'm not going to grumble. I'll go to the water tank I mentioned before. Come on. Why won't it change? <laughs> there you go, water tank. Weirdly, you can't change to water. Oh, you can now. The water's going down, so if I if I sit there and watch it for a second, it should change. It has changed because I think it started at. There you are. It's just dropped. I like that. Really cool. Clever. There's an the icing unit on the back there as well. It tells you what's going on. Again, the water's there. I like it. It's good. It's nice again. It's nice to finally have this. So I'm not going to grumble. I've got massive issues. To be fair, it's just the little bits I've pointed out. Mainly thing for me is obviously like the model and stuff where there's holes and stuff and bits disappear. Um, th them things should have been seen and sorted way before release. This this is what your tester should be looking for. I love the weather in there though. Absolutely grimy as that radiator, <laughs> filthy. Is that the end of the door? Uh, the chair there. There's a bin. Now we're not going to going to see everything in this video, but this is just a, a, an introduction, just to show you what the pack does and what you can do with it. Which covers the basics at the end of the day. It's just, it's just to show you an introduction at the end of the day. You'll want to get all this and have a good look yourself, and this is where you, then you'll go into it and find more things out. It's the same thing I'll end up doing. As I go along, I'll, I'll find more things, but I'm using it most likely to make scenarios. Just, you know, this does is all sorts here as well. I don't know if everything works here.
fire alarm test. Whether it does a fire alarm or not, I don't know. It's cool that you can actually do all this over here though. You can actually drive oh you can drive it from this side. I think. Oh, apparently you can. How do you drive from this side? You change. Uh, I have no idea how that works. If I, if I try moving it with mouse, it doesn't seem to do anything. That one does. I'm not sure if you can. Is there a button somewhere or anything that you can change over so you can actually use that um, PVC uh, lever? I'd have to have a look in the manual, Matt. If you know of it, if you can, let me know. That'd be great. But yeah, a little bit of power on. I don't. Where are we here? I think we're near a hill town. This takes you through to a uh, chill. Not actually that far away, to be honest. We probably might as well just drive down there. Jet the tracks. We'll see. Might end it early. Ooh. Them stores are just the root tiles, well, and there's nothing sinister. Ah, it's a fantastic bit of kit. I do like it, to be honest. It's a, it's a niche thing, at the end of the day. Not to everyone's taste. But it is niche. I like niche. Many things in tests that I like that are like this. I'm going to try and get a cool screenshot there, but you can't see the jets. Get back in here for a minute. So to tur turn all that lot off, by the way, it's literally just a case of doing the, the reverse key bind. So it's like shift, shift P to stop, shift um, M and ends and all that sort of stuff. Just to turn all the kit back off. So it's literally reverse off what you've done. So it's pretty simple stuff. Obviously the uh, the automation screen, the Jetta screen here, you can see everything that's going on with your RPM. So you put power back on the RPM, just uh, climb back up. Yeah. Is it brakes going on now? You can see the uh, the moving up and down. The RPM is climbing up now. Oh, storming in here. I'm meant to stop here. I don't know how, how good my brakes are going to be. Just put full anchors on because it's red. Oh dear. I think we'll actually stop. <laughs> so that's because I'm not paying attention to what's the HUD saying. At least I've actually stopped. By press. Maybe the brakes were a bit too good, I don't know. Again, I don't know this sort of stuff. But again, at the end of the day, it has been worked on alongside with people that operate these, so if they're happy with them, maybe it is right. I just think the, the acceleration's a bit uh, pant. So, press shift and P. Burn it off. He says. Okay, don't want to work. I don't want to stop jetting now. Why ain't it stopping? I'm going to put it into neutral view. No.
Yeah, I got those. Oh. At that point, could we sat in red anyway? I don't think there's much need for me to carry on with it anyway. Um, I'll just leave it as that. I'm not overly sure why it hasn't turned the jet. I'm not sure you have to be moving to stop. Uh, you can initiate an emergency stop of all modules by using the red stop all quick. Oh, I'm gone. Okay, there's um. That back on. To be fair, we didn't see this boot sequence, did we? Energy. I remember that on one of my old monitors. So you can red stop all equipment button on the operated desk, or stop all equipment on top of the right. Oh. So apparently, you can press the stop all equipment here. Oh, it's done it. Ah, fantastic. There we go. It does work. <laughs> I couldn't get it to work a minute ago. There we go. Right, we've stopped. Brilliant. So, yeah, that's pretty much, in a nutshell, is your MPV. Um, links in the description. If you fancy it, go and grab yourself a copy. If not, then fair play. It's uh, If it's not your cup of tea, then uh, move along. <laughs> I can't say more than that, really, can I? Anyway, um, yeah. I think 46 minutes is enough, really, isn't it? I've shown you how to get it moving, how to do the jetters. Um, I've taught you through bits and pieces. I'd like to hope I've at least given you an insight to what um, you get for your uh, money on this one. If I've missed anything, let me know. Um, I hope I've covered as much as possible. And again, the bits and pieces that I've pointed out, um, I might have missed some bits. If anyone else has seen other bits, pop them in the comments or send... Um, all star trains a support ticket of anything you may have seen but at the end of the day if you don't say anything things don't get uh, fixed so again hopefully duncan will uh, see this video and uh take any feedback on board any issues i've found uh, things possible will get fixed uh, moving forward but yeah fantastic it's a great bit of kit as well so i'm glad to finally see this in ts and uh finally be able to actually have a drive with it so yeah good stuff let's take one more quick look around whilst we're in the sunlight there Very good. <clears throat> there we go. Right. <clears throat> good screenshot. Um, right. I'm going to leave it there. Links in the description. You know where to go. Thank you very much for watching. If you uh, want to like, share, and subscribe, feel free to do so. Hit the notification bell for future videos and all that jazz. Um, thank you very much for watching, and I hope you've enjoyed. We'll see you again very soon on the next video. Don't forget, you can catch on Twitch at twitch.tv forward slash trainsim underscore TV. Usually Fridays and Sundays. Uh, occasional extra streams as well do come um, when there's time, so keep your eye out for those. But on that, thank you very much. I will catch you again very soon for the next video. Bye for now.